Good day. Good morning, Hi, Valda. Good day. Hello. Good morning. All the great greetings today. Yes. This is the Valda Beebe Show. We're broadcasting live from Dallas, Texas on a global platform. Who do I have in the studios with me? Hey, Valda. I'm Cal Sundaram, the CEO of Sun Pharma. And my name is Charlie Malta. I'm medical director for Sun Pharma. I want to thank you both for joining us. If we could start with you, doctor, if you would set the platform, because I heard we've got some exciting news about a cancer drug. You set the medical platform, then I'll speak with the CEO. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready, oh. doctor? You want oh, to yes, tell I'm... us about, about the breakthrough? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I'd like to talk to you today about a, a remarkable medicine called imatinib. It is used in the treatment of cancer patients, especially a group of patients who have leukemia. And leukemia is a, a blood cancer where, in this particular case, a kinase, a, an enzyme responsible for cell reproduction, uh, goes crazy and it doesn't turn off. And what this medicine does is actually stop that enzyme and facilitate the death of those cancer cells. And these patients who before would only live a few years now can have essentially a normal life. Pretty remarkable. Dr. Lump, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, drugs are stopping the death of patients now, and now we're having lung life from HIV to cancer mm -hmm. to whatever. Mm -hmm. When you have this lung life, is it a good quality of life also? Oh, that's a great question, and many cancer patients, sad to say, it may not be. In this particular case, they capture the life they had before. The symptoms go away, they're as active as before, uh, and they really don't feel as though they're bothered by their cancer anymore. That's so exciting. Uh, doing this show, I, there are people every day that, that, that contact me with some form of cancer. So this is why I was so excited to talk with you guys. And if I could talk to the CEO, your company developed the drug, is that correct? No, Valda. The original product was developed by Novartis. It was considered a miracle drug when it was developed 20 years ago. So now the patent life is sort of ending for the product and we are launching a bioequivalent therapeutic equivalent for the indications approved by FDA, we are launching our version of the same product. So you're doing what they call a generic? That's correct. Let me ask you this. When you come to the market with a generic, and this is something I really want to know and I need to have the truth too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is the generic equal to the name brand? Mm. Absolutely, yes. And the FDA takes a lot of precaution to ensure the product chemically as well as in the human body, it does what the original product does. So when you bring the generic to market, mm -hmm. your goal is always, the patents run out, now you're creating a drug. So it's, is it always less expensive or just sometimes less expensive? It is. It is Generally speaking, it is less expensive. In our case, we anticipate at least about 30% cost savings to the healthcare system in the U.S., through launch of this product. And as time goes by, I would expect the savings even to further increase. Okay. Let me ask you, does your, your company really care about the people taking the drug? And let me ask you this. This is just a general question. Yes. There's a company out there that increased the price of a drug 300 times, and it's like $800 of a pill or something like that. Do you guys really care about the consumer and want your drug to really have an effect in the market? Or do you just want to sell your product? Well, well our own, what do you say, mission is to bring high quality, affordable, and also innovative products to the healthcare of the patients, not only in the U.S., around the world. So patients come first. Within that, we have to make sure that we work out our economics. That is correct. That is always for a product. I want to thank you so much for saying that because the consumers are just, you know how we go now. You go to, to the pharmacy and, you know, we just feel like whoever creates the drug just does not care. And, and, and for, some, for a company to put the patient first or the consumer first, 
that's that's going to give you a winning formula. Mm-hmm. Doctor, let me ask you this. Now that we've got this drug, how how does one know to ask for it? Do I have to wait for my doctor to tell me, or do I need to be smart and savvy and say, look, I heard about this interview, and mm-hmm. Valder Beebe and these great people said. Sure. Uh, well, if you ask me, probably there are a couple of ways mm-hmm. the patients will find out, find out about the product when they go to the doctor. Depending upon the insurance scheme that the patients are on, the patients will sort of get to hear about it. More than that, we have created a website called Imatinib Rx, I-M-I-T-A-N-A-B-R-X. If you go into the website, there's plenty of information about the product, and we also have, what do you say, uh, schemes to enable patients who can't afford to get the drug. We sort of subsidize the product for people below poverty level, depending upon sort of what you say, depending upon the norms. Some of the patients can even get the product free. So once you go to the website, you'll get to see a lot more. You guys do care about consumers. This makes my heart sing. I want to thank you guys so much for talking to me on the Valder BB Show about this new breakthrough ability for many people to have this drug now. I really thank you. I want to thank you, uh, uh, Charles Melta and... Cal Syndrome. The CEO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, Valda. Nice talking my, to you. My monitor's not working today. I want to thank you guys so much for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. Yeah. It's been our pleasure. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.